All right, collectors, here we are again. Uh, we're well into summer now, June 25th, 2022, and uh, coming up fast on uh, the 4th of July. So I hope all you guys are having fun, and I uh, guess a lot of you will be on vacation now or soon. So uh, it's always a good time of the year. Uh, we had uh, several boxes come in. Uh, the last week or so and uh, uh, I hope that there'll be uh, something interesting with them I don't know it's uh, uh, we'll see all we can do is open them and mm -hmm. we'll open them and get a cigar lit the first of the day it's a little early today it's only noon but I guess that's okay I don't know but uh, so here's to you all. I wish you the best. Prost. And I hope that you'll enjoy this video. We'll, we'll start out with this great big box here that weighs a ton. I guess it's some kind of sword box or something, but uh, we'll see if I can take it out from this side because this looks, well, maybe not so bad. Uh, and let me try to cut the at the main stem here and we'll see what happens. Somebody wrote in in the last video that they think it takes too long uh, for me to unbox everything and uh, I don't know there's only as fast as so fast I can go and uh, I think some of the fun is uh, is wondering what's inside, isn't it? And the drama and all. So I don't know. I, I guess if I took everything out of the boxes and just put it on the table, it wouldn't wouldn't be that much uh, that much fun, I don't think. But uh, well, you never know. Let's see what do we got here? This looks like some pretty clever boxing here. Kudos to the guy that did that. That's a good good protection. Looks like we did it again here. Then another guy wrote in and he said that he thought that we should have a, a table over here and a table over here so that old Whitman doesn't have to bend over so much. Well, I appreciate that. That's, uh, that's probably not a bad idea, but maybe it's not so bad for old Whitman to be bending over a little bit too. It's good exercise. So let's see. Uh, well, it looks like we got a sword here. Looks like a nice bag that somebody made for it. Let's see what we got. I hope it's something fun. Ah, it looks like fun already. Wow. Here we go, guys. It's This is an aluminum Luftwaffe officer's sword. And um, you can see it's still got the guild on the... Uh, Sun wheels and the uh, the leather crescent hanger is really in good shape, and you see a few scuffs on the on the scabbard, uh, but they're they're nothing to um, uh, if you've ever heard of a shoe cream. Uh, what's the name of that stuff, Bob? You don't know either. Uh, Meltonium. Uh, it's rather difficult to get, but you can get it in um, navy blue. And you just put a little bit on a rag and it can go over this and let it sit for about half an hour and you wipe it off and you never know that there was any scuffs on the scabbard at all. So these these are not gouges or anything. So I think this all will come up in a pretty minty condition. Let's see what the blade looks like. Oh yeah. Another beauty. These uh, nickel plated blades are always fantastic. It's uh, completely mint, and uh, who's the man? Oh, here we go, a little bonus, guys. Carl Eichhorn. So, uh, I think that's a really nice sword with all the gilt on it and all. Uh, that's something that uh, I don't think anybody would mind having into their collection, so I like that a lot. It's a nice, uh, nice piece, and we'll put it back in the bag so that... Uh, I don't scuff it up again while I'm trying to get the other stuff out here. Let's see what we got. So, so far so good, huh? 
Uh, this one's not as easy. It's got some paper around it, but it looks like it's, it's not all taped up, so we won't have any problem with that. Especially if I have a little sip. Mm. Ooh, wow, that one's a little strong. I like to make them a little stronger at first. And as usual, my cigar went out. we got here. Oh well, nothing special here. This is just a uh, an NCO police tagging from what I see. Yeah, just a standard piece. Um, shows a little wear and all. It's never been never been cleaned up it looks like and there's a couple of minor little hits in the scabbard but not bad. Still the original paint and all and Let's see who made it. Oh, the blade is, well, that's nah, nah, not too bad. The blade's got a couple nicks in it along the edge here, but nothing. You know, that's from these veterans' kids sword fighting. You know about that stuff, I'm sure. And this is a um, Alcozo piece. I think you can see it there. It's upside down, but I can see it. Upside down, but you guys know what Alcozo looks like. So this is the kind of thing you can buy. If you're on a budget, this is not going to be an expensive sword, and it is what it is, and it's got all the history behind it. Let's see what else is in here. There's a lot of stuff in this box, guys, I'll tell you. There oh, we go. Whoops, looks like we got another one here. Uh, this one looks in much, much nicer condition. The ebony is all good, and it's got the the uh, NCO Aluminum Eagle in it and the pommel top is plain, yep. Scabbard paint is excellent on it, all original. So that's not a bad piece so far. Let's see what the blade looks like on this one. Oh, beautiful. It looks very, very nice. Let me take uh, this all out so we can see the whole thing here. Yeah, this, this blade is fine. Nothing wrong with it at all. What do you think, Ob? It looks good, doesn't it? Better than the other one. <laughs> yeah, better than the other one. Oh, this is a Herman Rath, too. I like the Herman Rath people. They were big, big distributors of um, police things. Ran a lot of ads in the Soligan books and all that. So, okay, that's good. That one's going to be a little pricier than the last one, but if you're looking for condition, uh, it looks like it's really there. I th the, the washer's missing, but maybe we can find one around here to fix that up. Let's see what else is in this box. Oh, this one's in another another modern-made bag, but uh, oh, <laughs> well, here we go, guys. Oh yeah. Well, now we're now we're getting up in price. Uh, this is a um, an SS officer and it's a Dachau made piece. You can tell that uh, right away because the fittings are made of stainless steel and so is the runes button. Um, they also, uh, the scabbards are a little different. Um, this is the proper scabbard for it. The uh, Dachau scabbards are slightly thinner than regular uh, police scabbards and look at the paint on that. Wow. Wow, it looks pretty nice. Let's see what the blade looks like, Ob. Uh, the blade's in very, very nice condition. And as we see a lot with Dachau pieces, the, um, uh, the blade is unmarked. Um, and it has the right washer on it too. A lot of a lot of people think that all SS officer Dagens have to have a white washer, but that's not true. Um, the Dachau pieces never have a white washer; it's just a black or a brown one. So that's a that's a very nice sword. Uh, the Dachau pieces don't sell uh, for what the earlier pieces sell for. You know, the Krebs or the unmarked early pieces, but they're still. Very collectible, very original, and this one is 100% uh, 
I love it when I see they have the right scabbard with it. That's very, very important. Now on the scabbard, isn't there something about the lower fitting that's different than the other officer swords? Uh, well, it doesn't have any um, any screws right. in the lower fitting. It's just pressed into place. What they did was they would heat this mount um, and then put it on hot and then as it cooled it shrunk and so it stays in place. So it was basically too small to begin with but the expansion of the heat made it fit on. Uh, you also see some early Degans too that don't have screws in the bottom fitting. Uh, but Dachau, that's a, nor that's a normal thing. Um, I really like this, uh, this piece a lot. Um, a lot of guys that collect uh, SS uh, things or SS swords uh, would like to have both types. So there's a there's a nice item there, and we'll we'll put it back in the sack so that Whitman doesn't screw it up here, fooling around with this unboxing and cigars and all that stuff. So all right, that's good. Ah, some good stuff in this box. I'm liking it. Oh, there's even more, guys. Oh, I'm glad. I hope some of you guys are sword collectors because we've got a whole box of swords. Mm. Ah, you might collect some Imperial too. It's good stuff. And the Nobili cigars. Mm hmm. Let's see what we got here. Aha. Okay, this uh, this looks like a a basic dove head. Maybe an Alcozo. See, it just has the, the basic uh, uh, plain top on it with oak leaves engraved in the back strap and then around the D-guard and uh, then a, a standard Wehrmacht half open wing eagle with the swaz. And let's see, uh, yeah it is an Alcozo sword but the blade looks like it's mint. So again, this is not a, um, an expensive sword. Uh, this model was um, relatively um, low priced. So they sold a lot of them. Here's something that, uh, as long as we see it here, see that a little bit of the wood runner is sticking out? These runners were just pushed into the scabbard, so we see that happen a lot of times. And it's nothing, you just you just kind of push it back in again and uh, there's no problem at all. It's a normal thing. So that's a good one for you guys on a budget. You can get into a sword like that for five or six hundred bucks easily. Sometimes even a little cheaper. My overhead's more, so it's five or six hundred bucks. You know how that can be. But let's see what we got here. Oh boy, we're getting... Uh, we're getting NCO uh, police sword to death here. Here we have another one. This one's in uh, pretty nice condition. Yeah, plain top, good grip. Uh, original scabbard paint shows a little age, but it's not too bad. And the blade looks decent. Uh, that one looks like a Puma. Is that a Puma, Ob? Oh, yeah. 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 All right, that's good. And somebody threw a white washer on there, which doesn't belong. See, <laughs> but they thought it ought to have. Oh, you got to have a white washer, you know. So that's not really true. So that's a good white washer. I can save for where it should go and perhaps confiscated. substitute another one. But uh, yeah, we'll have to confiscate that one for something. Yeah, we else. might confiscate that in the parts box. <laughs> that's where it goes. And are we done here? No. no? No, we're not done yet. We still got some more. Oh, there's a lot of stuff in this box. I know this collector is a he's a very very nice man. His name is um, Kevin Bourgeois, and uh, he uh, he's an Arden collector, and uh, he's selling a few things now, and uh, his. Um, his main buddy with collecting over the years has been my 
good friend Bill Shea from the ruptured duck. So, uh, uh, but then again, if Bill's such a good friend, how come Bourgeois keeps sending this stuff to me? I don't know, but uh, I'm not going to question it. So don't tell him. Don't tell him now, guys. Let's see what's here. Oh, yeah, this is one of those, uh, I think they're Bulgarian, uh, made in the 50s when the Russians were in, in charge there. Um, but they're still kind of nice daggers. They're well made. They don't sell for a lot of money. But again, a great thing to hang on the wall. It's got a nice uh, chain hanger with a clip on the end there. and So that's a good thing. And uh, let's see what else is here. Uh, oh! Oh boy, we love to get stuff like this. Here we go, Ob. Yeah, we got some goodies here. Oh, this is one of those, uh, I forget what it is. USS guys will know what that tab's for. I, I, I forget. It's a special tab for a certain group. I will look it up, though. It's not a problem. And uh, here's a good um, Veterans Eagle. Uh, we see them a lot, and uh, they sell for very reasonable prices. And a nice um, NCO, Enlisted Man's um, Portapee for a bayonet, Trottle. And also another really nice uh, Trottle. I like the colors, the green and red. Very Christmassy. And let's see what's in these napkins. Oh, here we go. Wow. There's a good black um, police or... SS Degen uh, teardrop hanger, very nice condition. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's not marked, but uh, most of them aren't. But uh, that's a that's an excellent accoutrement. Something like that will complete your Degen. Would go good on any one of those, including the SS Degen that we showed. Uh, and here's a nice um, a nice army teardrop for an army sword. That would be good on that Alcozo dove head we showed and and then it's green in the back to match the uh, the color of the army uniform so there's pretty good stuff in there and, uh, all right guys uh, we're moving along here and let's see what's in this next box I don't know I'm seeing it for the first time just like you guys so hope it's something that we all enjoy looking at well, Newspaper and that looks like what we got here. Some more free bubble paper. Certainly rather have that than those popcorns all over the place. Uh, I'll see if we can get this open for you quickly here because we, we took a lot of time there on that last box because there was so much stuff in it. Um, but I think that's okay. You know, unless you're on your way to church or something, uh, this uh, you can sit and watch some of this, I'm sure. I know it takes a long time for that guy that says it takes too long. I'm, I'm sorry, but hey, I am what I am. I do what I do. He doesn't have to watch if he doesn't like it. Well, you know what he can do? He just can fast forward the unwrapping, you know, that's all. I don't know, but you know, you can't please everybody no matter what you do, you yeah. can't. Oh, it looks like we got a... Wow. Yeah, now this is really a nice um, early SA, and the way the marketplace is today, we just can't get enough of these. And it's got a nice um, short hanger and uh, and a belt loop, and let's see if it's... Uh, yeah, it's got a group of mark on there, so it's an early piece. Nickel fittings and the scabbard has pretty good anodize on it. In fact, it's very nice anodizing. Let's see whether the blade holds up to the rest of it. Um, it's not too bad, but it's uh, it's a little a uh, little bit worn. It's got the fog, yeah. Yeah. And who made this? Um... Oh, this is one you don't see too much, guys. Uh, that's the Otter. Oh, yeah. Gabruder Burns, I think it is, something like that. Uh, that's a pretty rare trademark and kind of desirable. 
So that's a good thing. The um, computer burns even says otter. Otter, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, probably the German word for otter is otter, I guess. <laughs> I would uh, think so. Yeah. So there you go. That's not too bad. And uh, for somebody looking for a decent SA, not priced out of the sky, that's a good thing. And let's see what's in the next box. Ah oh, yes, this is my friend from Florida that uh, sends me stuff all the time. I think he he goes to every flea market and every show in Florida and says, "What can I find here that I can beat Whitman out of some money?" So uh, uh, that's a good thing, though. I'm I'm happy to do it if it's good stuff. So let's see what my Florida friend has come up with here this time. Wow, some kind of a helmet in here. Uh, I like this. Uh, fire police with the comb. Yeah, it looks like it's got a comb on it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. See now. All right, collectors. That's a. That's a pretty nice helmet. This. Um, uh, it's a fire police, as Robbie said, and. Um, when you see the comb on the top, these are the earlier pieces. They did away with the comb later to save some money. But it's got a real good national uh, decal yeah. on the one side. In fact, it looks perfect, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's 98. Yeah. And on the other side, it's got the, uh, the police insignia. A couple scratches there, but not bad. So let's see what the inside looks like. Yeah. It's all right. It's still got the. Uh, is all the chin strap here? Yeah, I think yeah. it is. Yeah, that's in great shape. Yeah, it's. Well, it's broken hair, but. Well, what are you going to do? It's a 56. It's Size 56. It and, doesn't uh, have the neck protector, though. No, but it has the tabs. Yeah. See, collectors, these little leather tabs. When they're on there. There was a leather neck protector that connected to these tabs that you could wear so that you wouldn't get burnt by a fire. So, uh, so that's all right. I like that helmet. Not bad. Let's see what else is in here. Uh, looks like an assortment of goodies here. Well, we got a. It looks like we got a. Just a, um, a long belt, yeah, an Army NCO belt. There we go. That's uh, all together though. It's in good shape. Yep. Yeah, it looks well well worn, and uh, so that's a good thing for guys looking for an Army belt. That'll work. All right, moving along. Another. Post office making money here on these priority mailboxes. That looks, looks like it's going to be pretty easy. Time for a little sip, though. Ah, yeah. It's starting to get watered down. I may have to go up for another one. This is looks like a holster, doesn't it? Rob? Sure does. Big holster. I hope there's no gun in there, but oh wow. Mm. Yeah, now here are guys, this is a this is a real beauty. It's a um, P38 holster and it's in um, magnificent condition um, on the back it's it's marked um, p38 and uh, the um, the belt loops are still there so for somebody that's got a uh, a nice p38 and you're looking for a sensational holster to put it in uh, this looks like a real winner 
yeah even the uh, the the pull thing is here to pull the gun out yeah that's uh, that's a very very nice um, very nice rigging and the clip goes in here in that slot so uh, it's an excellent thing like I say somebody that's got a uh, um, a minty P38 I'm sure that that would be of use let's see what else is here yeah we don't we don't sell any guns here and uh, we're in New Jersey and uh, uh, they put you in jail for, for doing nothing to, the local DA even runs an ad in the paper if you know any of your neighbors with an illegal firearm uh, call us, you know, that's just crazy stuff, so I don't know. But, oh, this looks nice. Oh, here we go, guys. Uh, boy, that's a really nice uh, NSKK. Um, it looks to me like the scabbard was probably repainted in modern times because it has a little orange peel in it. Uh, but you know, a lot of times when you see this, uh, the paint may have been on there for 30 or 40 years. You can just get some rubbing compound and, um, and compound that right down and you'll have a nice smooth surface. Because the paint is really, really nice. Has a gal mark on it, nickel fittings, nice grip. It's got a little burl grain in the grip and... Uh, so, uh, Nickel Eagle, let's see who made it. Uh, wow, this is a, a Geisen and Forsthoff. Uh, this is not a common maker at all. Um, I'll have to look that one up on the uh, Mixar list, but uh, that's a... Never seen that before. That's a rare, that's a really rare maker. Um, and the blade's not blade's not too bad overall. So, uh, and it has a nice um, hanger and belt loop on it too. So that's, um, I think that's a fairly desirable dagger with that maker. For you guys that are collecting maker marks, uh, I don't think that's something you're going to see very often. So that's a good thing. Well, I got a couple of things that uh, somebody brought over to me this week. So I. I bought them, so I thought I would show you them, too. Uh, everybody's always looking for SA daggers, and uh, there's some pretty good ones here, these three. Uh, this one is in uh, unclean condition throughout. It's got an interesting uh, copper uh, runes button in it, and uh, the anodizing is still pretty good on it. See, uh, it's got a washer on it that usually you don't see washers, but that one looks original. And the blade is a killer, beautiful, um, really, really nice blade with all the grain still in it. Um, oh, here, here we go, made by Asculup, of course. Uh, Asculup daggers are very popular with collectors, they, they like them a lot. Can you get that trademark, Ob? Yeah, and it's got a uh, a group of mark on it, so that's a pretty good thing. And then this one uh, also uncleaned and really a nice um, uh, grain to the grip that runs vertical uh, and great anodizing. It's it's still really bright. It's got that coppery look to it on both sides. And this one doesn't have a group of mark on it. it must have been made right after the uh, initial run. And oh, another whew, fantastic blade. That one's got uh, all the black in the backgrounds. And up, oh, and I see why because it's a Gabruder Heller with the anchor. Uh, they always did a great job with their um, backgrounds. So that's a great piece. Very, very nice, uh, very nice piece. Lovely. Hold on a minute. Just... You get that? Good enough. Mm-hmm. And 
then the last piece, um, again, unclean fittings and uh, the anodizing's got a little age to it, but it's it's not too bad. And a uh, nice grip. And uh, the blade shows a little wear. Uh, no, there's no nicks in it or anything. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, I like this maker. Carl Tillman with the fox and you'll see uh, you'll see underneath the fox it says Luke's L-U-X I think that means fox in German uh, but that's a that's a tough um, tough trademark to find uh, so for you guys collecting maker marks that's a good one and then one more thing uh, no big deal uh, but it's a uh, it's a nice um, uh, Eichhorn Sharn Horse Field Marshal Series sword. It's got an aluminum base, but the gilt is almost 100%. The, the only wear is just around the ears of the leopard. Uh, the grip is great. Uh, the scabbard paint is not bad, and it has a full mint, full mint blade with the Eichhorn trademark and. Uh, so for you guys that are looking for a good Scharnhorst uh, and you're collecting Field Marshal series, uh, this is a good piece. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, I got myself a, a little refreshing drink here, a new one. Mmm. Ah, just right. I don't start with a fresh cigar. Mm. Perfect. A drink, a cigar, and a German edge weapon. Hopefully, what else could you want for? Well, we shall see. Yeah, we shall see here. Mm. Uh-oh, looks like we got some of that popcorn here, Rob. Uh, not, try not to. Yeah, it looks like there's maybe a dagger bag in here. If we can get it out without the popcorn going all over, which is impossible. It's not bad. <laughs> not too bad. All right, that's good. At least it keeps everything, everything safe. Well, let's see what we got here. Are you anxious to see collectors? I am. Ah, more bubble wrap. <laughs> oh well, that's okay. The man is protecting his. Uh, Artifact, which is the way it should be. Oh, this is looking promising to me here, guys. Uh, all right, well, here we go. Oh, as I always say, you can never have too many chained SS daggers. Wow. <laughs> wow. Look at that beauty. Anodized scabbard, early nickel fittings, early center ramp, uh, solid nickel type 2 or type 1 uh, chain links. They're not solid nickel. The chain links are always plated on the type 1, but they're in perfect condition. All the original darkening in there, and uh, I don't know whether you can see the DRGM in the clover leaf, but uh, that just looking at this from here, that looks like a, a really, really great dagger. Yeah, that's a killer. Yeah, look, look at collectors, look how the patina just matches across everything. 
It doesn't look like anybody's cleaned this dagger in many years. Not that it's been dirty, but... And look at the grip. Absolutely perfect. The fit is tremendous. A nickel eagle, runes button. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. And a little wear there, but, but not much. The scabbard is still perfect. And, and on these Type 1 chains, you see that deep uh, SS Colder Zeichen mark there. See how deep that's stamped in there? On the Type 2 ones, it's usually kind of just hit a little lightly. And for you guys that, you know, you hear me talk about Type 1 and Type 2, the, um, the Type 1, um, the connectors up here that go into the clover leaf are straight, whereas they're tapered where they go into the clover leaf on the Type 2. And also the Type 1 skulls are larger and they jump out of the uh, link a lot better uh, than the Type 2. And also the clover leaf that was used on the Type 1 is open at the top. So you usually see the DRGM that was stamped on the uh, snap clip below. Um, and with anodized scabbards, not all the time, but a lot of time you see two screws holding them. One here under the ramp and then the other one over here. Well, let's just hope that the blade is as nice as the rest of this dagger. You guys like this dagger? Uh, this is about as nice as you're going to see. But let's just see what the rest of it is. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, Look at that motto. All the grain is on the blade. And boy, that's a... Uh, this, is a uh, this is a very, very nice um, chained SS dagger. And on the, yep, unmarked as we like to see on the, uh, the ones that were made from scratch. Sometimes you'll see them marked, but that's a case where the, uh, uh, the SS man wanted to not spend the money for the dagger and just buy the scabbard and use his old dagger in it. But, uh, well, I'll tell you, that's, that's about as good as it gets with a chained SS. It's 80 years old. It looks 80 years old, but it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, so, <laughs> I, like I say, you can't have too many of these. Um, somebody out there will want this. Um, it really has um, what I always call the wow factor. When you first see it, you, you just have to go wow. So that's a, uh, that's a, really, nice, uh, that's a really nice piece. So thank you, sir. I'm glad to have that. Um, I can't wait to either put it up on my website or if somebody wants it before it ever gets there, I wouldn't be surprised. But either way, uh, I have a couple, three or four in my own collection or I would think about keeping that one. That is, that is a killer. All right, let's see what else we got here. Last box, last but not least. I don't know what's in here. I hope it's hope it's not filled with armbands or something, but we will see. What's wrong with that? Well, no, nothing. <laughs> no, you're right, Ob. Armbands, we want these days. You just can't get them. And prices have been really skyrocketing on armbands. Stuff that we used to sell for 100 bucks is 250 and that's only in the last uh, three or four years it's really, really jumped up in value. And let's see, we got a lot of letters and, wow, uh, picture. This must have something to do with the dagger. Uh, this is going to be something cool, I think. I don't know. We shall see. Up oh, here's a, um, here's a certificate that, um, uh, was executed because the grip on this dagger is going to be real ivory and you need these certificates to uh, to be able to sell things. So let's see, uh, well I thought it was going to be a dagger but <laughs> we, got, we got a Jap flag here 
That's the one with the sun too. We like them, right, Ob? Yep. Yep. Rising sun, war flag. Yep. Mm -hmm. And a nice uh, banner. That looks good. And uh, oh, another uh, another Jap flag. Got a little hole over here, but uh, it's not bad. And then let's see what this uh, what this dagger is all about. I like the bag. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, as you can see, this is a this is a really um, beautiful army dagger. Looks like a holler with that cross guard, and you can see it has a factory ivory grip on it. Look how nice it's toned in that nice crack that runs down the length of it. And one on the back side too. And look at that toning on the edge there. The dagger must have been sitting this way for years for it to get that golden tone. Uh, and it has a generic type um, scabbard up. Oh. Uh, here we go. Let me put my glasses on. But uh, this is something very, very good, guys. Um... This is named to Oberst S. Rasp, I think it is, R A S P. Yeah, that's a that's a nice thing. And let's see what the the blade is. Uh, yeah, it is a holler. Um, but what's really interesting, the uh, the owner of the dagger has done. Uh, research on it and uh, and this is um, Herr Rasp he was became a general so he purchased the dagger or the dagger was purchased for him before he became a general look at the nice um, oak leaves underneath the name too that's uh, that's really really nice uh, so this is uh, this is something where you have the opportunity to uh, to own something that was um, owned by an historical figure. He was a uh, General Dal Infantry, uh, born in 1898 in Munich, and he died in um, 1968. Uh, but his whole uh, record is here. Um, and it's just something, something like this is uh, uh, just really, really cool. Um, there it is, a major historical figure. You have the dagger. It's not only a beautiful dagger, but it's got an ivory grip. It's engraved to the owner in a very beautiful, professional manner. And it, it just doesn't, um, it doesn't get any better than that. I mean, the, the next owner of the dagger, you could, um, you could uh, look for the, the medals that, um, General Rasp earned and um, display them with the dagger or whatever you would want to do, uh, but it just is uh, that this is a um, a wonderful piece, uh, extremely rare and in top top condition, and like you want to see with something like this, it's a holler blade, uh, and you want to see that the fittings are all holler. Uh, Holler also use these generic uh, scabbards all the time, so that's good with a Holler piece. So, uh, a great piece of history there. So I guess, uh, I guess on, uh, on that note, um, I'll thank you for watching again. I really appreciate it. And I hope everybody's having fun collecting. You're having fun, aren't you? That's the main thing. And remember, you know, when you buy a dagger, you buy it because you like it. And uh, there's so many things out there. Um, you shouldn't have any problem finding something you like. Just make sure it's original. And if you need any help, I'm always here. Send me an email. And I appreciate all you guys watching and all your comments. And uh, it's just great. Uh, you make me feel young again. Here's to you.